can tell me about your experiences at the national level in terms of cycling here in Barbados before you, before you reach that point? Okay, well, <coughs> there have definitely been some drastic changes in the, in the whole national team scene and whatnot. Um, when I first started cycling, obviously the federation was under different powers. Um, when I started, you know, Keith was the president and whatnot. And I had some really great, great trips, you know, great experiences. Um, as I said, there's definitely been some changes and, you know, and in short, there's, uh, I think, a, a lot of improvement to do at this current stage. Okay. Tell me about where you are right now. You're a professional cyclist um, in terms of your um, events and stuff that you've taken part for the year. Now, how have those results been? Um, well, as many people know, I had a really bad accident uh, midway through last year. So, you know, I recovered from that and I've spent a long, long time in, you know, rehab and recovery. Um, just so that I can be, you know, at my, at my best this season. I started off this year, you know, with very consistent results. Um, on the national scene, I, I went to Pan American Championships, which had, you know, the largest turnout ever, mm -hmm. um, obviously because of the Olympic cycle and whatnot. And I managed to, to finish that, you know, with some of the best, the best in the world and in the region. Um, and then I went on from there to get some of my, you know, best results in road races throughout the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So I definitely would say that I've had a really good start to the season. It's, it's definitely a big confidence boost to see that I, you know, return to my best level. Um, so I definitely think we've turned a, a good page. In terms of your, your, any achievements, any goals you have planned um, for this year that you would like this year's outreach? Um, yes. To be honest, I started this season, you know, with a very high work ethic and whatnot because I felt like I was capable of something, of, of achieve, achieving something really good at the CAC Games. Mm -hmm. um, I was notified about two weeks ago that I was left off the selection. So now uh, my goals have shuffled a bit, um, but definitely I still have some big targets for this year, like you know, winning both you know national titles, and then also regaining my title as the best road rider in the Caribbean. Okay. As relates to being left off the CAC Games, any reason was given as to why you were left off? Um. They just felt like uh, road didn't really stand a chance, and that's, that's, that has been my main focus. So they decided to give, you know, the allocated spots to track cyclists. Mm. Well, what were your initial feelings uh, after hearing that news? I was definitely very, very disappointed. You know, I've, I've worked really hard to prove myself. I think I, I've you know, really showed the BCU what I'm capable of at various occasions and events. Um, so definitely very disappointed, but I mean, with everything in life, you, you kind of just have to accept it at some point and, you know, use disappointments to fuel your fire to, to be motivated to, to achieve the next great thing, you know. Mm -hmm. You spoke about um, some changes um, which you had seen taking place in the BCU, and you, you spoke about some improvements that you think um, were necessary. Um, you care to elaborate on what, what you would like to see those improvements be? Yeah, I mean, for, for starters, the BCU has been making some very, uh, I, don't, I don't even know the word, very, making mistakes with very important stuff. Um, and it's definitely things that are that can can be worked on. Mm -hmm. I think in terms of the knowledge of cycling within the BCU, I think 
the, the management has, has a lot to learn. Um, and then this, this is the benefit for not just me, but for every single Barbadian athlete. You know, we're now at the level where we can compete with the best of the best in our region. And I feel like there's been some administrative mistakes that have been, you know, hampering performances overseas. So, so what's next for you now? I heard you say that you were planning on leaving. What's, what's next for you? Well, s since the whole shuffle um, with, you know, CAC and then also with the very late cancellation of, of the Nationals, um, still waiting to, to hear back from the BCO on that, but obviously I have to now regroup and I'm waiting to have a conversation with my coach to, you know, rebuild some structure in my training. Um, and obviously I need, I need to input the, the targets that I have to get that done. Obviously, um, the Olympics are next year. Any, any, any holes, any goals, any dreams of, of making it to the Olympics? Um, in my honest opinion, I'm very realistic. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I currently don't feel that I have the backing and the support that I need within my federation at this present moment. Um, so, you know, that's, that's without saying that if the opportunity were to present itself, you can bet that I would be 110% uh, to represent Barbados to the best of my abilities. But, you know, I also said I'm realistic, so. You feel that you've done enough, you've proven yourself um, to the BCU that they should be fully behind you? I mean, I, 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 I'm not big, big on talking and trying to convince people. I let my results do the talking. And I mean, you can, you can pull me up on pro cycling stats and whatnot, and you can see, you can look back for, you know, six years or more and see how, how I've grown consistently over the years. Um, you know, and, current, and r most recently I went to a competition in Guadeloupe, which is, you know, arguably the highest level racing you can get within the region because there's a lot of European attendance. And, you know, I even proved to myself, I shot myself that I was able to compete at the front of those races. So I, th I think that, you know, everything that needed to be said is there in my results. Um, and I think everybody could see that.